What's going on, people, and welcome to the LV Live Show. I've been on a little hiatus, people, but I'm back. Please hit that like, share, subscribe button. Once again, thank you for coming to the show. Uh, also, too, hit me up at the Blue Steel Show at gmail.com, Blue Steel Show at gmail.com. That's a show that I do on here, also, too, with my boy Jeff. It's another channel that I have here. It's great content, great sports things, you know, it's topics that I love to discuss and talk about. Please come through and support that. Uh, but once again, as you guys know, I love talking about sports talk. So today we're going to be talking about the whole topic of boxing's pound for pound king. And just a breakdown of the fights that's going to be going on. I think it's a lot to discuss, a lot to talk about. Like I said, I've been on a hiatus, man. So I'm just uh, trying to catch up on some things. And I, of course, everybody's well aware um, that everybody's waiting for the return of Oh, the true Spence. And who he's going to be fighting next. Um, I've been hearing a lot of topics. And I hear a lot of people talking about a lot of different fighters that he should fight. And of course, you know, that's that big mega fight that everybody wants to see. Is that Terrence Crawford fight. Which I think is on the horizon. But I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, people. I think that in a lot of game, a lot of time, excuse me, in the game of boxing... It's not about who's the best to fight, the best matchups. It's about who's got the biggest bag and the biggest price tag. And if you kind of take a look at what people have been gaining and earning over this time, Elwood the True Spence is up there as being a cash cow. Up there with Pacquiao, Canelo, and of course Deontay Wilder. So that's why I say that I just don't see the Terrence fight, Terrence Crawford fight happening anytime soon. Um, I'm a big fan of Bud. I think he's a great fighter. But I'm sure a lot of you people know he just got himself jammed up in a really bad deal. Not financially for himself, but as far as being on a on a center stage, fighting against the top tier fighters that we know that are over there on the PBC. And of course, having the freedom to be able to fight who he wants, when he wants. That's kind of hurting, bud, because now we can't really truly see his true skill set against the top fighters. Because I do think him and Errol Spence are 1A and 1B in the sport of boxing. And why I do think that the mega fight that people want to see is Errol the True Spence against Terrence Crawford I think the biggest money fight outside of the heavyweights to me is Errol Spence versus Saul Canelo Alvarez I know a lot of people are going to be thinking I'm going to say I was going to say Pacquiao Pacquiao's there but I think Pacquiao's number two but I think the biggest fight out there the biggest fight Cash-wise, is Errol Spence versus Canelo. That's possibly a fight that could be made 2021, what I would like to see, Cinco de Mayo of next year, which would be a mega fight. If everything works out and EJ gets passed, Danny Garcia, who I think will most likely be his next fight. And if he fights Pacquiao, and he beats Pacquiao, let's say he's successful, of course, in, all, in those two fights. He'll have three belts. And as you guys know, EJ uh, walks around pretty much about 160, 170 pounds in between fights. So if him and Canelo could fight at about a 160 catch weight. Because I think that's what Canelo is. I think Canelo fluctuates between 168 to 154. I think he can make any 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 type of weight. Uh, so can EJ. And if you guys have seen Oscar in the past has said. You know if some of you guys don't know Oscar. I'm sorry. Oscar being a promoter. Oscar De La Hoya for a golden boy. That he would love to make that fight. 
I think that's that's a fight that they could both cash out on. Because you have the Mexican fan base and then you have the black fan base, African American, of course. And like I said, you could do this 2021 Cinco de Mayo. And the location, of course, would be in Jerry's World, Dallas Cowboys Stadium. That seats 100,000 people. And they would fill that thing out to the max. You hear me? Packed. Second to Joshua Wilder. And maybe, and, you know, now I have to kind of think because because Joshua and Wilder both lost. I don't know how big of a fight that is anymore. I, I know it's still big, but not to the big mega fight or money that it would have been if Wilder wouldn't have lost and Joshua wouldn't have lost. But if Earl Spence makes it out of this year and he looks good in his next fight, his next two fights, and he looks good, that's something I think PBC should take a look at and work with Golden Boy to make this fight. Of course, everybody wants to see him and Terrence Crawford. I, I, I agree. But I'll touch on what I think Crawford needs to do to kind of get in that stratosphere with those guys. Meaning financially. Because once again... A lot of these fighters are not in the area of fighting the best. You know, a lot of these guys are in, in, in the mindset of fighting, you know, where I can make the most. I mean, these guys are businessmen, so they're putting their lives in the line. So now when they get to a certain peak, a certain point, they want to know what their earning value is. And I mean, you know who gave them the blue point. Excuse me, who gave him the blueprint to this, and that's TMT, Floyd Money, Floyd Money Mayweather. The money man has made the blueprint and created the blueprint for these fighters to follow. And to me, I don't really see an issue with it. I don't, because, you know, we're not in there putting our lives on the line, taking punches to the ribs, the kidneys. So I just think that these guys have to do what they feel is best for their future. But I see that. I see a huge fight next year. Because you got to think, guys. You got to think of the type of fan base that this is going to bring in for Earl Spence and for Canelo on a world level. Globally. This will be huge. And they, this, this will easily do over a million pay-per-view pay -per buys. Easily. Now, second to that, of course, is Errol Spence, Manny Pacquiao. Now, if he chooses to come back from his hiatus, you know, you know, since the accident, if Errol Spence chooses to come back and fight Pacquiao right away, I wouldn't suggest. I wouldn't suggest that because I just think he does need a tune-up. Um, I'm sorry to say I don't want to call Danny Garcia tune-up because I don't think he's anybody's tune-up, but. On a level of Pacquiao, I don't think Danny Garcia is. So I think Danny Garcia is a good barometer to see where Earl Spence is at after the accident. And then right after that, he goes right into the Pacquiao fight. But if his team feels he's ready, because if I'm correct, I think him and Pacquiao have the same type of um, time frame in which they pretty much are going to be ready to fight. I think it's going to be July of this year. They both should be ready to fight. Um, so that's whether, you know, Pacquiao chooses, um, Mikey Garcia or someone else or Spence chooses Danny Garcia. But I'll tell you this much, if, if Pacquiao comes with the right paperwork and the right presentation to Errol Spence, Errol Spence is going to take that fight. There's no way he's going to leave that fight on the table with all that amount of money that they can make. And that's another fight that I wouldn't do in Vegas. I would do in Jerry's world. And the reason why I keep on saying Jerry's world is... Is because you got to understand it seats 100,000 people. So you're going to get a lot more than you would get in Vegas. Because remember, Mikey Garcia and Errol Spence, they almost have 50,000 people in them stands. So you figure Pacquiao, you could possibly get double that or even close to that. Maybe about 70 to 80,000 people in Jerry's world. And that's a big money fight. 
So if you see, if you see the kind of like the pattern I'm going on, Errol Spence holds all the cards. He just does. He can make the decision to fight Crawford or not. And he's still going to end out on top with a whole bunch of money. And if he wins all these fights, including Canelo, first ballot Hall of Famer into the Boxing Hall of Fame. Without even fighting Crawford. Now Crawford's kind of in a pickle. He's stuck. Because now who does he fight? Who is Bob Arum going to pay to fight Crawford? You got Kell Brook out there. Could that possibly be a matchup? You got Josito Lopez, who's with the PBC. That's a possible option. But who else is out there? Who I think, and I'm sure everybody else has been saying this. He's got to get on the phone. He's got to call his boy Sean Porter, man. He's got to call Sean Porter and they got to make this work. Not just for him, but for Sean Porter also. Because if Sean Porter gets on the phone with Bud, and let's say he possibly beats Bud in that fight, he's got a direct, straight line to Errol Spence for a rematch. Because now Errol Spence might be, this might be enticing to get a rematch with Sean Porter, which they could possibly do instead of L.A., they can do in Vegas. And because the first fight was such a bomb burner, they could do it again the second time with another strap on the line. And as Errol Spence feels, as we all know, his slogan is strap season. That's very enticing. But then he could be a unified champion at all the belts. And also, too, making a whole lot of money with that. So Terrence Crawford, he's got a lot to gain here. A lot to lose, though, also. But the way to get in, the way to get into the party is you got to fight one of these guys. And you're going to have to take an L possibly on a financial piece in order to kind of deal with whatever, you know, whatever the paperwork is in order to fight one of these guys because that's the only way you can get into the party. Because then, because my thing with Terrence Crawford, as much as we love him, where does he go from here? Because he's got to deal with a promoter. He's got to deal with a boss, Bob Aaron. So he's kind of stuck where all these guys are making power moves. Even Danny Garcia, even Keith Thurman. These guys all have options. Danny Garcia, Danny Garcia can fight a Mikey Garcia. He can fight a Mikey Garcia in L.A. at the Staples Center and make a lot of money. Keith Thurman can come back, fight an Adrian Broner, make a lot of money. And then possibly do a rematch with Sean Porter with the with maybe a direct line to fight maybe Errol Spence for the belt, getting a shot. So these guys all have options. Terrence Crawford is just stuck. He, he's stuck, and it's sad to see because he's such a great talent. He's the best switch hitter I've ever seen. I mean, the best fight I've ever seen was Roy Jones, hand down, hands down. But you know, as far as a switch hitter, Terrence Crawford. I, I, I don't, I don't. I don't remember anybody as good as him. So it just stinks that we can't really see him. Like, I want to see Terrence Crawford against Danny Garcia. I want to see Terrence Crawford against Keith Thurman. I want to see Terrence Crawford against Sean Porter, against Errol Spence. But the problem is that on the PBC side, you have all those guys that are just as good as a big fight as him. Especially when we start speaking of cash and what these guys are going to be making. So why are they even going to even chance it? Especially if they, they, they got to deal with the headache of negotiating with Bob Arum just to get a fight. So it's a tough thing, man, and it's kind of sad to see, but I mean, that's just kind of something I guess Bud is going to have to work out because now, because he's stuck until he gets out of that deal. But from what, what I've heard and from all these channels and everything I've seen, He's not done with that contract till God knows when. I mean, I don't know. Bob's got the paperwork, man, and I don't know how he made the deal or when he wrote the deal or what the year is. You know, no one knows. It's all a secret. But Bob, I know who knows. Bob Arum knows. So, you know, so it's, you, you have a situation here to where, you know, when we really speak of pound for pound, 
the best fighters in the game. I like Bud. I want to put Bud on that list. But the problem is that he's not facing the top guys. He's not. Spence can lock in and load up on fighting Danny Garcia. He already beat Sean Porter. Beat Manny Pacquiao. Unify. Fighter Canelo, Canelo Alvarez. Beat him. Then maybe fight a Keith Thurman. Beat him. Then maybe do a rematch with Canelo Alvarez because the first one was a bomb murder burner, let's just say, and he could do another, another fight with Canelo. In Vegas this time. A rematch. I mean, look at all those options. Look at that. And, and Errol Spence could be retired because I think he just turned 30. He could be retired at 35 and be done. With a resume that is just contender after contender, champion after champion, on top of one after another. Well, Bud is going to have a lot of B-plus, B, B-minus fighters, man. So it just stinks. It really does. So in all actuality, you have to ask yourself, people, What's left for Bud? What's left? What, what can he do? Because they're all spending all those guys on sweating it. Because they, they're locked in, man. They know who they can fight. They know what it can do. There's a lot of deals on the table, man. It's a lot of money to be made over there on that PBC side. It's a lot of deals they could possibly do. Slip over to the zone and get a two-fight deal. I mean, it's a lot of different things, man, they could do to make a whole lot of money. And get a lot of great fights for their legacy. But who's in the driver's seat, honestly, to me? It's Errol Spence. He's in the driver's seat. Because I'm telling you, I love Bud. I think that's a great fight with him and EJ. But I don't even think that's EJ's biggest fight. I think that might be number three on the list. To me, number one is Canelo. Canelo at 160 in Dallas next year. I think that's the fight. That's the big money fight. To where EJ might walk out making about $80 million. And if he wins, forget about it. Then they can do it again. And then before that... He might get Pacquiao, which way he might get 50 or $60 million. I mean, the price is, I mean, come on, man. So this is where Bud gets X'd out. And so to me, it's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Bud's got to do something. But the man, pound for pound, to me at the top of the list is Earl the True Spence. And he's in the driver's seat. And he's got his hands and his legacy right in his hands going forward. The money, everything is there for him. But, as we all know, we will really see what he is and what has he become and, you know, how he really is, you know, pretty much after this fight that he possibly has with Danny Garcia after this accident. And if everything works out, which I think it is, he looks like he's good to go. He's in prime position to go down as one of the best fighters ever. That's it for me, people. Listen, this is LV Live. This is my rant, my show that I've been doing. Sorry for the hiatus and being gone for so long. But please continue to come back, support the show, support the channel. Hit that like, share, subscribe button. Also, too, hit me up at Blue Steel Show. It's my other channel, Blue Steel Show, with me and my boy Jeff. It's a great show that we do on sports content. It's a great show, man. Please come through and check it out. Also, too, hit us up at bluesteelshow at gmail.com. Bluesteelshow at gmail.com. Also, send us emails, texts, anything, statements that you have. So we can pretty much um, definitely let you know and talk about talk about you on the show and just kind of get people and the fans um, integrated into the show to where they can feel like they're involved with it. But uh, once again, thank you for coming through and supporting. I'll be back at you.